Hi, I'm Claire. I teach computer applications technology here in Johannesburg. You know how your teacher always tells you to practice past papers? Yeah, that doesn't really help if you don't know how to do half of the stuff. That's what this is for. You'll find a link to the files in the description below, along with the table of contents, so you can just click straight to the question you need help with. We all learn the best from our mistakes, so please, you have to try this by yourself before you watch this video. Let's get into it. Right, now we're going to start with question 7. It's got a bunch of stuff that we're going to do. We're going to start with 7 res. And we're working in the find worksheet. Let's just enable the editing. And we need to add a function in cell G2 to determine whether research will be published or not. And there are two criteria. One is that column E needs to contain the word CSS. And the other one is that column C needs to have more than 500 participants. So you could do this with a nested if. I'm going to do it with a regular if. Let me show you. And in my logical test, instead of putting one test, I'm going to put two tests. And one can do that by using the function AND. Now I have the ability to do two tests. I'm first going to say, is CSS equal to CSS? Is that cell is E2 equal to CSS? And the next one, I just add a comma and I can add another criteria and I can say that one needs to be more than 500 and close my bracket. Then my value if true is the word publish and my value if false needs to be a blank cell so that is two parentheses open and close without anything in there. Alright so just so you see here the AND function allows you more than one logical test. You can add a whole bunch and you just separate them by a comma. Okay, save. Next, we are working with this database and we need to import an Excel worksheet. So enable, we're working with external data and we're gonna import, not export, import Excel. Browse, let's go find it. And then they said it has to be a linked table. So I'm gonna just say link the table. I'll just go with the default settings. It's picked up that that's column headings and they said I can use the spreadsheet worksheet name and that's the same name, finish. And you'll see it actually shows, instead of a normal table icon, it shows you an Excel table icon because it's linked to Excel. So whatever I change in Excel will be updated here. Next, I'm working with this burden Word document. Enable. And I need to edit this. Um, they said I need to add a cross-reference to the end of this text that links to the table. So that I do in the References tab, cross-reference. I'm not referencing to a numbered item, I'm referencing to a table. And I'm not going to insert the entire caption, they've already put most of that in. I'm just going to insert the page number. Insert, close. Now you'll see if I hover over it, it actually shows me that I can control and click to move to that table. The next thing I need to do is I need to insert a header that's different from the last page of the document than to the rest of them. So basically the first two pages should not have the header, a lecture, only the last page. So firstly we need to switch on our show hide to actually see what we're doing. So they've already inserted a section break next page. If they didn't, we would have had to do it ourselves because the only way to set different headings in different sections of the document is with section breaks. So we'll go to this header, edit header of section two. And you'll see at the moment it is set to link to previous. And if we enter something now, let's do that then you'll see it actually shows in the first section as well, which I don't want. So before I edit this header, I'm going to remove the link to previous and then I'll insert the text in extra. And you'll see if I go and look at the top, it did not insert it in those first two pages. Save and close. Now we have a spreadsheet that we're gonna use to do a whole bunch of calculations and we need to give our answers 
in a Word document this answer one. Okay, so firstly, just enter your examination number over there. And then we're going to start with the questions. So the first question is, how many members appear in the spreadsheet? So um, a nice shortcut to use for this kind of big data, because you'll see it has lots of rows, is to use Control Shift together with your arrows. So Control Shift arrow down selects everything up to the last one you'll see. And then the Excel displays the count in the bottom corner of your window. Count is 500 and it actually shows you the number of cells that contains data. 500. So my first answer is 500 and they said I didn't need to provide an explanation for that one. For all the others I need to explain how I got to the answer. All right so the next one is how many members live in Oh, let's just go to the top control home to quickly move to the top how many members live in Bloemfontein okay so for that one I am just going to do a straightforward count if I'm going to do it next to the side here and say count if of this range so I'll start from B2 control shift down and my criteria is then Bloemfontein and my answer is 19 Let's go pop that in our answers. So used count if of Bloemfontein. Don't worry about your spelling here, just get the answers correct. Next, we need to find out how many members are older than the average age of all the members. Okay, so in this instance, you can just control click down and you'll see the average is 48.618. And then you can do, because in this case we don't have to show all our steps, we just need to describe how we've done it. It's a lot like the Olympiad. So we're going to say count if of this lot, if it is above 48.618. And remember with the count if, if you use your greater than or less than, you actually have to include parentheses around the lot. So there's my answer, 257. 257. And now I've got to describe determined average age used count if above that average. Okay. Then, what is the average waist size of all the male members? So... I am going to use for that an average if. So average if, let's go and look at the function arguments. The average range is the waist size. That's obviously what we want to average, okay? Then the range and the criteria is we need to find out who of these are male. So the criteria was male. And the range was column D. Okay, so that gives me the average waist size of all the males. So I'm just going to copy that cell's answer and actually pop that in there. And I'll just say average if male. Okay. Next, we need to find out who has the highest risk of heart attacks, males or females. So here it says whether they are male, male or female, and here it says yes or no, they have a heart attack risk. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a count. I'm going to say for female and for male, and this one is going to be a count ifs because I'm counting two with, with two criteria in mind. So count ifs just enables me do, to do literally like one count if of after the other. So the first range is this heart attack column. And the criteria, just have a look at my function arguments. Next, I'm going to do a comma and then add in my criteria. My criteria for this one is yes. Next, my next range is the gender column, comma. And my next criteria is 
female. Okay, and then I'm lazy. I can't just copy this down because I didn't make my ranges absolute. I could have done that, but I didn't. It's lazy. So I'm just going to copy my whole function inside the cell itself. And I'm going to paste that again and just change this to male. I could have just actually clicked on this cell. So females are clearly at a higher risk. So I'm going to specify that I did a count ifs and the answer was female. Save, close. Save this one just in case anyway.